Well, hello there. Welcome to my Sewn Online School. My name is Miss Guriras and I have Landry here with me. And this week's theme will be Culture and Cultural Events. Before we start with our lesson for today, I would like for us to put on our mask. Take your hand sanitizer, sanitize your hands nicely, thoroughly as well as between your fingers, around your thumb. Very good. Now that everything is in order, in place, we would like to start with today's lesson, which will be the word sums, data handling, as well as multiples of three. Okay, now I would like for us to turn to page 14, grade two level, and we will start with the word sums. Word sums are almost like a riddle. I hope you guys like to have riddles, but there are rules that we need to follow. For example, Read the sum carefully and you need to understand what you are reading. Circle the numbers in the word sum and draw the sum if you are struggling. And decide whether it's going to be a plus or a minus sum and then you need to add the sum together at the end. For example, Peter has four apples. You can put four apples on one side. Sam has three apples. You put Sammy's apples on one side. Now, how many apples do they have all together? What do you need to do? Do you need to minus or do you need to add? That's correct. You need to add because we want to find the number of the, all the apples together. So we add the sum. That is how we do some of the word sums. Okay, let's quickly do more examples. Look at the examples there below. Do the following word sums. Teacher will do the first one with you. Let us quickly read. Mark has nine pens. Only five of his pens still has ink. How many pens are empty? Remember, he has nine pens and only five of these pens have ink. How many pens are all empty? What are we supposed to do? We need to take away the five pens away from the nine pens. What are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to add or are we supposed to minus? That's correct. Whenever we have to take away, we always subtract. So you use the minus sign. Nine minus a five will equal to four. So the pens which are empty will be four pens. All right. Now I would like for you to do number two, three, and four on your own. Remember to always write the number sentence. Okay. Let's turn to page 15. Now this is grade three level. And this one we call it also the problem solving. It's the same and similar as the word sums as well. <clears throat> Pardon me. But since we are busy with our problem solving, there are guidelines, rules that we need to follow. Okay. First of all, just like we did with the grade two level, we need to read the sum carefully. That's the first step. The second rule is we have to determine which calculation we can use. Should it be the plus or minus or division or the multiplication? But since we haven't touched on the division and the multiplication, we will only go into focus on the addition as well as the subtraction. And after that, we need to write the number sentence. Do you know how to write a number sentence? Okay, let me tell you quickly. For example, let's quickly take the example of number one. A vendor sold 36 tons of tuna on Saturday and 18 tons on Sunday. We have two numbers there again, 36 and 18. That is the first sentence about the vendor. 
And now the second question says, how many tens did he sell all together? Now we want to find out the number of the tens he sold all together. So we need to write the number sentence first. We write the 36 and the 18. But between these two numbers, we have to decide whether it's going to be the addition or the subtraction. But since we want to find out the total of the tens is sold all together, we have to write the addition operation in the middle. And so we calculate. After we have calculated the number, we get our answer. And after we write the answer, we cannot just write um, the answer all alone because we have to indicate what the answer should be. For example, the question says how many tens? So we have to indicate so, so tens were sold all together. And that one, we call it the number, what sentence, pardon me, what sentence. If we get a total, The total will be 54, 54. So he sold 54 tens. We sold 54 tens all together. And that one will be our word sentence. Let's quickly do number two together as well so that I can explain more. For example, a beggar wants to sell all 63 loaves of bread that he is having on the shelf before he bakes fresh bread. How many bread, loaf of bread does he have? It is 63 before he can bake another fresh ones again. Now, by 11 o'clock, he had sold 23 of the loaves. He sold it from the 63 loaves that he had. How many loaves are still left in his shop? What are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to take away or are we supposed to put together? Yes, that is correct. We are supposed to take away the 23 loaves from the 63 loaves. And then we will have the total of 40 loaves left, which he still needs to sell. Now you have it. First of all, you need to write the number sentence, and then you decide which operation you have to use. After that, you do the calculation, you get the total number, and then you have to write it in the word sentence. You have to write a word next to the word to indicate how many what was sold or how many what was left. Now, number three, four, and five, I would like for you to do that at home. I hope you have enjoyed your previous lesson. During this lesson, we will focus on data handling. But what is data handling? It is to show and compare information on a graph form. Okay, let us quickly look on the graph that we have there. A graph normally has a title on top. So in this case, can we quickly read the sentence there? Amber drew a graph showing the amount of money she spent on cultural activities for the month of March. So there should be a title given to this graph here. Let us say, for example, since there are different activities that she did, we can say cultural activities can be the name of the graph. You can just underline for me the word cultural activities. That will be the name given to this graph. We have the graph, or the name, sorry, on top of each graph. Then we have the lens representing and comparing in bars. Can you see, for example, we have the bar for the sports. We have the bar going up for the art, drama, choir, and the dance. 
And on your left side, on the left axis, we have the numbers indicating, indicating how many money, how much money did she spend on all of these activities. All right. So let's quickly look on the first bar that says sports. How much money did she spend on the sports? So you go all the way up to where the bar is ending and then you read the amount that she spent on the sports activity. How much was it? Yes, that's correct. She spent $50 on sports alone, $50. And on art, then you go to the art column and then you go all the way up to reach the amount of the money she spent on the art activity. How much was it? 40. 40. Very good, Landre. It was $40 that she spent on the art. Let's move on to the graph. You go all the way up until where the column, the bar of the drama ends. Where did it stop? 60. So it means how much money did she spend on the drama activity? 60 Namibian dollars. Very good. We go all the way to choir and dance. I would like for you to complete those ones as well. Let's quickly look at the grade 2 level uh, questions. How much money did Ember spend on drama? So you go all the way to drama column where the drama is you go up with the bars and check where it indicates how much money she did spend and then you write the amount that she spent on drama number two how much money did ember spend on sports on which activity did she spend the most money so you look in all the bars there you compare all the bars and look which one is the biggest, the highest bar. And then you indicate the amount of money she spent on that specific activity. Now below we have the grade 3 level. And we also need to answer the questions based on the data handling we have there on top. For, for example, number 5. This is just a little bit one level higher than the previous one. How much money did she spend more? Can you underline the word more? On dance than art. Oh, now this one is tricky. Now what does it mean? Whenever we see the word more, we want to know how much more she spent, the difference. The word more simply means what is the difference between dance and the art activity? So what do we do? Whenever we see the word more or the word difference, we need to know that we have to subtract the smaller one from the bigger one. So we have to write the activity, the amount of the drama activity, which is 60 Namibian dollar minus the art activity, which is 40 Namibian dollar. And then you will have the total of 20 Namibian dollars. So which means she spent $20 more on dance than on art. I hope that's clear. It's a bit tricky. I would like for you. Okay, let's quickly do also number six before I can actually give you more work at home. How much money did she spend on art and choir? So we have two activities here. We have art which is 40 Namibian dollar and we have the choir which is also 40 Namibian dollar but the question says how much money did you spend so which means we have to find the total for both the art and the choir so we have to add them together to get the amount which will be the 18 Namibian dollar okay now it's time for you to practice. I would like for you to practice number seven and number eight on your own. All right, and read carefully for you to understand the questions. All right. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed our previous lesson 
in data handling. All right? Now, I would like for you to turn to page 17. We are going to look at the multiplication of three. All right? But what is the multiplication? How do we multiply? Let me quickly show you what you can do when you're multiplying something. Multiplying is actually when we are doing skip counting. In this way, we are going to skip counting in threes. All right. We can either do skip counting or we can also do repeated addition. What does it mean? For example, if we have um, three plus another three plus another three, this means we are repeating the addition. Ne? This way, we can do also the skip counting. Let us quickly count. Three, six, and nine, which is the total nine. But now there's also a shorter way of doing this. We count the groups. We can group all of these threes in a box. We can group them all in a box. How many boxes do we have? Three boxes. And how many do we have in each box? We have three in each box. So that way, we don't write the addition anymore. When, whenever we are changing into boxes, we all just change the operation to multiplication. This is exactly the same as the one on top. This is just a shorter way of doing that. Now, so three times three will also equal to a nine. Let's quickly have another example. For example, also we can also change reverse. If we have five times a three, how many boxes do we have or how many groups do we have? The group is a number that normally appears here first. Ne? How many groups do we have? We have five groups. Very good, Landre. Five groups. We have five groups. And what do we put in between? We put the plus sign. Beautiful. And what comes in each box? A three. Three comes in each of these boxes. Okay. Now let us quickly do counting. We skip counting in threes. Okay. We count. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. But that's a long way of doing it, don't you think so? Yes, instead of having the repeated addition, we can just write five boxes or five groups of three will still give us the total of a 15. Now, there's also another way. Multi multiplication of three has lots of lots of or many tricks rather. Can you put out your hands, both hands? Can you turn them towards you? Can you see each of the fingers are divided into three segments? So we can also, whenever we get confused with our multiplication of three, we can still continue counting on our segments that we have on our fingers, right? So let's quickly see here. If you say one, two, how many will be two times three? So you count your segments. One, two, three. Four, five, six. So in another words, two times three will give you a six. Very good. Now how about a three? Three times three? You nine. Four times three? Then we count. Then we count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we can always use our little hands to count in the segments. All right? Let's quickly go back to our activity. Okay, so now here we are having empty boxes that we need to fill with the answers. All right, so we need, to, we need to multiply. We have three circles. Can you see them? The biggest one outside circle is where the answers should be. The middle circle is the one that we need to multiply the three was, for example, let's take 10. Three times 10 
what will be the total of 3 times 10? Again, you can use your hands or your fingers to count if you don't know or if, you, if, you don't, if you're struggling counting in three. So we can count 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. So 3 times 10 will give us a total of a 30. So that is what I would like for you to do. You multiply the numbers on the middle circle by 3 and then you write for me all the answers there on the outside circle. And that is all for this day. I hope you enjoyed it and remember to count on your fingers. Let's quickly sanitize our hands. It's very important to keep our hands jam free and never take off your mask if you go outside as well. Zoshki will say goodbye for us. Hi Zoshki. Bye. See you next time. Hi everyone. My name is Shoshi and I am Peck. My mommy used to tell me that um, I need to wash my hands and sanitize it to keep the germs away. Also, one thing you can remember is to sing the alphabet song while you wash your hands. Uh, after that, it will be super clean. I usually do it. And until next time, bye!